Hello and welcome back to my channel. We're going to be solving exercises. This set of exercises are exercises on derivatives of multivariable functions. So let's start. The first question gives us a function and says that we should differentiate it with respect to z. Solution. So let's solve number one. f of x, y, z is equal to x times 3z plus y. We are differentiating partially with respect to z. So you do as if every other thing is a constant. You see x as a constant and you see y as a constant. So this is just x. Then you differentiate with respect to z. Function of function. Okay, so we'll, differ we'll differentiate this first as if it's a normal function. So we have cos 3z plus y. Then we differentiate what is inside with respect to z. So that is times 3, right? Yeah. Because this is a constant, so it's 0 with respect to z. And then this is 3. So what we have is 3x plus 3z plus y. As simple as that. That's all for number 1. Number 2. For number 2, we have that f of x, y is the integral of this function, where d is continuous. We are going to find the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. So, one thing I will make life easy for you is to know that if you have um, a function f of x, so that is an integral from a, a is a constant, to x, another function of t, dt, where f of t is continuous. Then, the f by dt is equals to f of x. So, this is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, this is going to help us solve this. Okay? So, we, have, we are given that f of x, y is equals to integral from x to y, g of t, dt. And we know that g of t is continuous. To be able to apply this, what we need to do is make this function look like this. So we take any constant a. This will be equal to integral from x to a, g of t, dt, plus integral from a to y, g of t, dt. Right? The reason is because if you fix this point, you have this, you have this point minus this point plus this point minus this point. So the, this is plus this point minus this point, so it goes out. So you still have exactly this. Do you understand? Okay. So integral from 0 to 1, x dx. Hmm? Mm. If I integrate this, it's supposed to be x squared over 2, right? Yeah. Which is going to give me from 0 to 1, which will give me 1 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2, right? Yeah. If I integrate this at zero, from 0 to half, x dx plus from half. So you notice that my start is my stop here. From half to 1, x dx. This is x squared over 2 from 0 to half mm -hmm. plus x squared over 2 from half to 1, right? Mm -hmm. So this is going to give me half squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2 plus I'm putting in one now. One squared over two minus half squared over two. So you see that this will go with this. And your left is this and the exactly left this. So if I pick a point, even if I had picked this to be any number in R, any constant in R, hmm, what it will affect here will come A. 
Here will be called A. We'll have A here. And we'll have A here. It will still cancel out. So it doesn't matter where you pick the A from. It will still work. Okay? As far as it's in R. So that's what I just did here. I just picked a point in R and put it to separate x and y. Okay. Now, if you look at this integral, it started from x, that's the variable, to a. x is up. But here, you are seeing that x is down, y is up here. So the way to do that is to say minus integral from a to x gt dt plus integral from a to y gt dt. So what is f of x? The partial derivative with respect to x. Observe that this side does not have any x. Yes. So it's zero. Yes. Now this side is exactly this. Yes. So this f x. So this is minus G of X. Okay. Have you seen it? Yeah, but mm -hmm. how do we have it in A? A to X. Look no, up here now. Oh, okay, okay. This is fundamental theory. Okay, fundamental theory of calculus. Uh, so what is F of Y? G of Y. Number three. We want to show that the Laplacian of f is zero. The definition of Laplacian is saying that to differentiate the function with respect to x twice, differentiate it with respect to y twice, differentiate it with respect to z twice, and then add them together. Okay. So the Laplacian of f is equal to partial f, partial square f by partial x squared, that's what this means, yes. plus partial squared f by partial y squared, plus partial squared f by partial z squared. So, this is the function. Yes. Are we together? So, if I differentiate this function with respect to x, this is partial by partial x, partial f by partial x, right? Mm -hmm. Plus partial by partial y, partial f by partial y, plus partial by partial z, partial f by partial z. And this is partial by partial x. If we differentiate f with respect to x, what do you have? Mm -hmm. 2x plus partial by partial y. If you differentiate f with respect to y, what do you have? 2y plus partial by partial z. If you differentiate this with respect to z, what do you have? Z. So now, what you have here is um, differentiating again, you have 2 plus 2 minus 4. Zero and we are done. We have shown that the last time of f is zero. So the last question number four we have f of x for the i part. We have f of x y is equal to x plus y plus y exponential x. So we are going to compute this and we are going to compute that. So we are going to do it the same way we did it before. Partial squared f by partial x partial y. It's the same as partial by partial x, partial f by partial y. Right? Yes. So I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y first. So this is partial by partial x. Next we differentiate with respect to y. If I differentiate this with respect to y, I see x as a constant. So I have minus x sine y plus I'm differentiating with respect to y, so I have both exponential x. Mm. Then we differentiate with respect to x. Yes. What do we have? We have mm. minus sine y, right? Mm. Plus exponential x. Now let's do the second one. We have 
partial square f by partial y partial x. What would I give me? Partial by partial y. Partial f by partial x. Is equal to, you still keep this partial by partial y. Then you differentiate with respect to x. So this x goes out as a half plus y. Then we are differentiating with respect to x. So we still have plus y exponential x. Now we differentiate with respect to y. We have minus sine y plus exponential x. So what, what do you observe? They are the same. They are the same. Okay. Yeah. Then the theorem that says this is Schwartz theorem. He says that if f is continuous and partial f by partial x is continuous and partial f by partial y is continuous and partial squared f by partial x partial y is continuous and finally partial squared f by partial x partial y, partial x is continuous, then these two are equal. So, let's check this one. f of x, y is equal to x, y plus exponential y over y squared plus 1. Partial f, partial squared f by partial x partial y is equal to partial 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 x. partial by partial x partial f by partial y and this will give me what partial by partial x I'm going to differentiate with respect to y so I have x plus I'm going to use quotient for this so v this is u and this is v so v du we have v y squared plus 1 du is still exponential y minus u exponential y the v by the way that I have to y all of our v squared so we have plus 1 all squared now if we differentiate with respect to x all this will be zero. Mm. Mm. This will be one. Wow. So we have partial squared f by partial y partial x. Mm. Mm. This is partial by partial y. Partial f by partial x mm. is equal to partial by partial y. Yes. F Partial f by partial x is what? Y plus y. y. This is zero. Just y. Just y. And this is one. And this is one. And I don't. It's like two of them Okay. Let's try the balance. We are going to try solving all of them. I will solve the first two. You solve the next two. I will solve this. You solve this. Let's see. So let's see how it goes. Solution. We have w to be a function of x and y. We have x to be a function of r and s. And then we also have y to be a function of r and s. And I'm supposed to get partial of v by partial r and partial of v by partial s. Okay. I think we should take number two first so that you can guess how number one will look like. So let's see number two. Is it, number two is a function of three variables, x, y, z. But each of them is a function of only one variable, c. And we are getting the full derivative, not partial. The full derivative of t with respect to t. So the full derivative of t with respect to t is given by... Observe that when you are differentiating x, is full derivative. Because x is a function of only one period. When you are differentiating y, it's full derivative. And when you are differentiating z, it's full derivative. But when you are differentiating t, it's partial derivative because t is a function of three variables. So let's solve. The t by the t 
is equal to if I differentiate partially with respect to t, what do I have? Z. Is the x with respect to t, what do I have? Huh? Minus, Minus sign t. t. Okay, plus if I differentiate t with respect to y, this is where we are. If I differentiate t with respect to y, what do I have? 2. If I differentiate y with respect to t, cos t. If I differentiate um, t with respect to z, x. And if I differentiate z with respect to 2, 1, so I can do like that, right? And we're going to get this at t is equal to 0. Now, observe we have the problem. Z is not, it's just Z. We don't have it as a function of T yet. And we don't have X as a function of T. But we can solve that problem because we have X as a function of T and Z as a function of T. So we substitute. It gives us, Z is T, so T. Let's multiply at the same time. We have minus T sine T plus 2 cos T plus cos t at t is zero, right? Mm. If you put zero here, you have zero, right? Yes. If you put zero here, you have two. If you put zero here, you have one. You have two plus one, three. three. So, with the same way we solve this, you can solve this. Just that you will not have this z part because X is just a function of X and Y, so your job is actually easier. So you can take a moment and try this number four by yourself. Try it. So after trying number four, I expect you actually to have gotten your answer to be minus one. After substituting T to the five over two. All right, let's try number three. Or uh, try number three or number you one. Number one. I should do number one, or mm -hmm. you should do number one. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do number one. Number three. Do number three. Ah, I should do number three. Yeah. So number three. So this is one you do yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this number three. Okay. Okay, so number three, we have that W is a function of X, Y, Z, and we have X to be a function of R and S, Y to be a function of R and S, and Z to be a function of R. So we are supposed to get partial W by partial R. It's similar to this. Yes. The only difference is that we have partial W by partial R. This will not be fully D. It will still be partial derivative. So this is. So we just substitute, okay? It's we are given any points. Why should z be partial though? Z is equal to two r. Um, so can't it be full? Can't it be no? Have you seen f of x is equal to two? Is it a function of x? Yes, it is. Thank you. But can you see any exercise? Okay, thank you. Yeah, you now understand that z is a function of both r and x. Yes. All right. Okay. So we have partial W by partial X. I'll be 2X. Yeah, we are here. Yeah. 2X. Partial X by partial R. 1 over S. Right? Yes. Plus partial W by partial Y. 2. Partial Y by partial R. 2R. 2R. Plus, I know that you were expecting it to be harder than that. <laughs> it's just you. Partial of me by partial z. We have two z. And then partial z by partial r. We have two. Now, two. Now, our aim is to change everything that is with respect to s and with respect to r to x, y, or z. But what do we have? We have that x is equal to r over s. 
But we have 1 over s here. So what does that mean? It means that 1 over s, if I divide 2 by r, is equal to x over r. Now, I have r here, and I will still be having another r here. What is r? We have z to be equal to 2r. So that means that r is equal to z over 2. So this means that this is x over z over 2. So that's 2x over z. So I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to put this value of r here. Do you understand? So we will have 2x times 2x over z. That's right, right? Yeah. Plus 4. What is r? z over 2. So this becomes 2z, right? Are we together? Yeah. 2z plus 4z. Okay, I can connect this two. I can multiply this out. So what I have is 4x squared over z plus 2. No, this is 6 now. 6z. 6z. That is called. You can give number 1 a try. Why we try number 5? Together, five I O. Anyone you ask me to that, please. So, I'm um, try number one. Why would it? Probably number one. I'm sure you would have experienced that it's very simple. So your answer should be two x plus two y. If you decided to go ahead and try factor W by factor L, you will get minus two x plus two y. Let's try to linearize now. We've been given the formula of linearization here. So work has become easier for us. All we need to do is just substitute. Okay? In the example, they give us the formula. No. We are supposed to remember this. F of x comma y to linearize this is f plus f of x times x minus x plus plus f of y times y minus y naught. Okay? You just need to find it as x naught y naught and that x naught y naught and then finally as x naught y naught. That's all. The aim is, so that you can remember it, the aim is to make everything to have a power of 1. That's what they mean by linear, right? Okay. Linear means that the highest power of the 1. So this is your constant. Okay. This means that your highest power of x is 1. Okay. And then this means that your highest power of y is 1. So we are going to linearize this. So number 5. We are going to linearize this too. So let me take the first one, you take the second one. So we have f of x, y, z is equal to. So I'm linearizing, so it's approximately f of x naught, y naught, z naught plus partial f by partial x, x naught of x naught y naught of x naught y naught times x minus x naught plus partial f by partial y of x naught y naught times y minus y naught. So whatever you are differentiating with respect to is what you'll be subtracting at the time. Getting the difference between y and the point. Plus partial f by partial z of x naught. So oh, I forgot that I have comma, z naught. So comma z naught. Why not z not plus z times z minus z not? So this is the formula if it's extended to three coordinates z. And then we just substitute. This means that f of x, y, z is approximately we are going to plug in the point. 
we have f of 1, 1, pi plus we are going to differentiate with respect to x where we come from this first one differentiating with respect to x we get 2x minus y okay add 1, 1, pi then we multiply it with x minus this is x, 1 okay plus differentiate with respect to y we just have minus x. Yes. So we have minus x from substituting 1, 1, pi times y minus, what is y? 1, so minus 1. Plus differentiate with respect to z. Differentiate with respect to z, what do we have? Hmm? 3 cos z at 1, 1, 5, right? Times z minus 5. Yes. So this will give us what? What is f of 1, 1, 1? If you put 1 here, you have 1. If you put 1, 1, you have 1 minus 1. So you have 1 minus 1. Zero. Then if you put phi here, sine phi is zero. So this whole thing is zero. Plus now I'm going to substitute one one here. So if I put one here, I have two, two, two minus two, one, two, one times x minus one. I cannot have it as x minus one. Minus if I put one here, I have minus one. So times y minus one. And then finally, for here, if I put pi up here, I have cos pi oh, it's one. Minus, minus one. Minus one. So we have minus, minus three into z minus into z minus pi. And this will give us x minus y. So minus 1 plus 1 is 0, minus 3z plus 3pi. So this is linear because the highest power of all the unknowns is our 1. Okay, so you can try the second one yourself. This. So please try number 2 by yourself, substitute the point 3 comma 2. And tell me your answer in the comment section. I'm not going to put the answer on the board. Please tell me your answer in the comment section. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Kindly subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Like the video. Bye.